In this exercise set, we're going to look at how to write absolute value equalities from the graphs. Now to do this, we have to remember our definition of absolute value. It's defined as the distance from zero on the number line. And with absolute value equalities, that means either within, create an and compound inequality, or it goes beyond with greater than, and it becomes an or compound inequality. So the first thing we want to do is I'm going to kind of show you how we examine this problem. What we need to determine is, first, is it an and or an or compound inequality? You can do that by looking at the graph. For the, so the first thing I notice is this has your solution between two numbers. It's between 3 and negative 3, and so that means this is an and. absolute value inequality. So that means I'm going to use absolute value and it's going to be a less than symbol. And so I have absolute value and I'm going to use less than and it's going to be or equal to because these are shaded for it. Well now I need to figure out what's going to go in the middle and what's going to go on the outside. Well the outside is the distance and so if you think about absolute value you go from zero on the number line. And we'll just go ahead and do, let's say, absolute value of x is less than or equal to a. When we did this before, that said, hey, you went a to the right, and you went a to the left, negative a, and you're within this area for your solution space. But if you think about it, if you go a units to the right, a units to the left, then the middle of that tells you where you're starting. And so what we need to do is we need to find the midpoint because that tells us our starting point and the middle of that then tells you your distance. I went A to the right. So what's the middle of negative 3 and 3? And the middle of that is 0 for it. And so really, I'm going to write down here, you're going to have X and you would put down a minus 0 is less than or equal to well, how far did you go? And we went one, two, three units to the right. So it's less than or equal to three. But that's not simplified because you never show minus zero. And so we would just do the absolute value of x is less than or equal to three. And that is the compound, well, the absolute value inequality represented by this graph. Well, it's the same idea here. If this is pointing to the outside, then that tells me this is an or, which means greater than. So I'm going to put my absolute value bars. They're open circles, so I'm just going to put it greater than. And now we need to figure out what goes in the inside, what goes in the outside. And what you do first is you locate the middle between these. And so if I went one half to the right, one half to the left, the middle is zero. So I get x minus zero is greater than and I go one half to the right, so it's greater than one half. You never show a minus zero, so we have the absolute value of x is greater than one half, and that is your absolute value inequality represented by the graph. And now I feel it's my job to make sure you also understand is both of these had zero as the middle. If I were to move the middle, let's say, to the right, one unit, I need to understand all the times I did x minus, x minus, x minus. So if it was to the right one unit, it would be x minus one. It's the opposite of what you see, and you start to understand this more when you go into transformations in some of the later sections we will be doing. So the trick here, and we can kind of write down a thought process for you, is find the middle. So absolute value of x minus, and I'm going to use capital M for the midpoint, just for the number line. And then you would decide, is it greater than or less than or equal to? And then you find your distance. And so x minus your midpoint of it, and then either greater than or equal to less than your distance to the endpoint from that position. So hopefully that helps you a little bit when it comes to writing the absolute value inequalities when given their graphs.